Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. Hello, Exchange family. I've always wanted to say that. And thank you for tuning in to Chief Chat. You may have noticed that I am not Chief Osby, but he did invite me to help a host today. So quick shout out to him. Many thanks, Chief. Uh, my name is Senior Master Sergeant Sonia Berry, Exchange Assistant Director of Public Health and Food Safety. I'd also like to say hi to my co-hosts today, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zark. Hello, ladies. Thanks for having me today. Hey, how's Thanks. it going? Nice to have you. Yeah. All right, keep me honest today. I'm depending on you. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing great so far. You're doing great. <laughs> Um, I also want to say a big thanks to all the soldiers, airmen, guardians, Marines, sailors, and Coast Guard members and military families joining us. Uh, Kiana, would you please do us the honor of introducing our special guest today? So today's guest is a Desert Storm veteran and served as a Navy hospital corpsman at Camp Lejeune. She has over 20 collective years of design, writing, and publishing experience, co-founding Mac Publishing as creative director. She is currently the owner and editor in chief of At Ease Magazine. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Christine Walker. Hi guys. Hi, hi Christine. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to have you today. So I'm going to start off and asking, where are you joining us from? Um, I'm here in Pilot Point, Texas. So not far from y'all. No. No, so we are so excited to have you here with us, Christine. We'd like to start by talking about your military career. So what influenced you to serve our country? Um, that would be my family. Um, I have over 14 family members who served from World War I to Desert Storm. Um, and a lot of it had to do with um, just that's how our family was. My stepfather was Navy. My great-grandfather served in um, World War I. At the Battle of Argonne, and um, my, both my grandfathers served in World War II, and uncles served in Vietnam. My dad was Air Force, and my brother's Marine Corps. So it was just kind of a natural step for me to just go in. So you served as a Navy hospital corpsman at Camp Lejeune. What was that experience mm -hmm. like? It was crazy at the time um, because it was desert storm. So all the guys were coming back. All the Marines were coming back from uh, the desert. Yeah, there's a picture of it. I haven't seen it in 30 years. Wow. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, I just, I loved it. I, I worked clinical on the wards. Um, so the guys, my patients were um, coming back and, mm -hmm. It was kind of a crazy time. We didn't know how to treat them sometimes. Um, there was a strict <clears throat> no media policy, which, you know, at the time I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. And, and we were old school. So we actually had like folder charts. We didn't have, we had one computer at, and that was at the nurse's station. Um, but all the charts were handwritten. All our notes were handwritten. We didn't have tablets. We didn't have any of that stuff. Oh my so gosh. <laughs> we, would, we would walk around with a big bunch of charts of our patients and, and go from room to room to room. And sometimes I'd have patients who never had any visitors or anything. So I would go in and chat with them, do my charting, whatever, um, just to keep them company. But yeah. So, and I was pretty good. I was, I was the one who could get any blood drawn and I could put any IV in. I was like the, I was, that was my superpower. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that, that's an impressive superpower. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was a random superpower, but it was my superpower. If, they, if nobody else could get it, you know, AJ Walker could get it. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Well, thank you to you and to your, your family for your service. Um, so when you left the military, I'm curious, what influenced your decision to enter the world of uh, design and writing? Whew, that was a journey. 
um, back when I was in, there were no transition services. So when I got out of the military, I went to logistics and picked up my last check, the per diem for my move, um, my DD-214, a kick in the tuchus, and I have a nice life. So once I was out, I was mm -hmm. on my own. I'm like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to do a resume, nothing. So mm -hmm. I did what I did and I followed my heart, which was not in the medical field. <laughs> um, <laughs> I went to um, floral design school, actually, um, and that was interesting. And uh, I just kind of hopped from one thing to another, um, just trying to get in. In 1996, I, I went through the Texas Peace Officer Academy and actually passed my T-close first time. Um, and then I immediately went to California and I was a, the head of security for a pharmaceutical company in La Jolla, California. And then shortly after that, you know, doing that, I had to do a lot of writing, a lot of policy and procedure. So that's kind of, I was always a writer, poetry, little things, but nobody knew it. Um, it was only when I had that job where I'm like, okay, now I have to do it for my work. So um, yeah, and then over time it just developed, so. So your career pivot into design and publishing led to the creation of At Ease Veteran Magazine, which is a super amazing publication, that, publication excuse me, that gives a voice to veterans. So can you tell us more about the magazine and what inspired you to create it? So um, I was with Mac Publishing and I loved it. My friend and I <clears throat> and her husband founded it. But I was, it was a little community you know, rag. And I was like, nah. you know, it, it was okay, but it wasn't my heart. I loved publishing. I loved everything about it. But, you know, veterans were kind of my heart. And so I had to have some life saving surgery in 2020, at the height of the pandemic. So I was an hour and a half away in a hospital with no visitors. And I had just gotten out of surgery. And the next day, believe it or not, the Blue Angels were flying around all the hospitals in Dallas. I don't know if you guys remember that, but I had a private room with a perfect bird's eye view, literally, of the Blue Angels across my, my window. And it gave me, I was in the hospital for a week, and it gave me a lot of time and inspiration to think about what I really wanted to do. And so I made the decision right then and there I'm going to start my own publishing company and I'm going to create a veterans magazine. So, and that's what I did. So it was, it took a long time. I started and we uh, did all the paperwork, business paperwork and stuff um, in July of 2020. And our first edition, our inaugural edition was printed and published in March of 2021. So it took about nine months to uh, build, to get it out. No, that's great. That is it. That's incredible. And that's an incredible story. Um, and so what kind of um, stories do you publish in the magazine? And what is your, if you have one, what is your favorite story that has been shared? Well, <clears throat> my favorite story is the story about my aunt, my great aunt, uh, Janita Bonham. She was mm -hmm. a uh, flight nurse in World War II and also in the Korean War. So she was with the Army Air Corps before it was the Air Force. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, she was actually, and I did not know this, this was a big foundational poll to start the magazine as well. Um, but she had been in a plane crash. Um, they had taken off, they were going to the, the um, zone in, in Korea. They'd taken off in Japan and literally 300 feet off the runway, the plane just dropped. And so she was underwater. She had to fight her way out of the plane. She got to the surface and she had a very big booming voice like me. I'm kind of soft-spoken, my, but my great aunt, if she wanted to, she could be heard across, you know, across the base if she, if she needed to be. Um, and so she got her bearings and she started barking orders 
um, to get these men who survived the crash into lifeboats. And um, she refused to get into a lifeboat until every single man that was that survived was in a lifeboat. Um, and then she finally got in, not realizing she herself had major head trauma. So um, they got in the boat. She was able to eventually whistle. Um, this is kind of a family thing. They were yelling, trying to get people's attention, but it was her whistle. She could whistle and some, some fishermen heard her. So they, they, uh, put her, they came and rescued them. And she was in the hospital for nine months. But interesting fact, she's the only living female during the um, Korean War to receive the Distinguished Flying Cross. Wow. So, so, yeah, so that is my favorite story. And yes, my cousin and I, her daughter and I, we, we fixed all the stuff because there was a lot of media back in the 50s. This happened in 1950. And there was a lot of media. And of course, they embellished the story and said this and said that. Well, we fixed it. So it's it's actually true and correct. It's the most correct version um, out there. So yeah, that is the story that inspired me the most. And because I had never heard it, even though I'm family, never knew it. And I'm like, if mm -hmm. I'm not hearing it and I'm family, what about all the other veterans? You know, World War II is passing away. Korea is passing away. Vietnam vets are starting to pass away. But every single one of us has a story to tell. Um, even, no matter how minute or um, unimportant we think it is, everything is a thread into military history. So I wanted to create something that we could share our stories. That is so incredibly special that you were able to do that for your aunt. Um, what an honor and so great in that now you're using that platform to give extend that to, to other veterans to share their stories. It's truly um, inspirational. Um, and I've had the pleasure of looking at the magazine. I just want to throw another shout out real quick. It's a phenomenal magazine and the stories are great. Um, so when it comes to curating content for your publication, uh, how do you decide what stories to run? You know what's funny about that? I've never said no. I I, I never, I mean, I have the covers planned, basically. Um, but as far as everything else, and, and we've got contributing writers who do um, their stories every quarter, um, feature writers, so that's pretty set. But as far as the rest, I don't plan it. Uh, I know it sounds insane, because I'm a planner, but um, I really let it just kind of be organic and I, and I get to a point where I, I have so much content, um, that I'm like, okay, I can't put you in fall, but I'll put you in winter. And that's kind of just how it's good. I've never, I've never not had enough content for, for the magazine. And it's amazing because what it has turned into is we are actually 100% veteran written for veterans. So, um, and we are probably, I think, the only luxury veteran magazine, 100% written by veterans, for veterans, and owned by a veteran. So it's kind of a weird thing. We didn't set out to do that, you know, to have that label, but it's just kind of what's happened. So, yeah, we have, um, I have these to go out, but this is, this is our magazine. So it's, it's pretty hefty. And it's got everything under the sun. And and I don't really filter or censor, so I just kind of leave it up to the writer. Whatever they want to write, that's what they get to write. And and we just and that's and we've got everything from VA information to uh, we have a section called DDT fourteen and beyond. Um, occasionally I'll put in a little section called Girls and Grit. Because you know that's us. We're the rebels and the trailblazers, uh, the fourteen percent of the one percent of the United States. Um, <laughs> that's what we do. And so, um, and and we have everything. We have humor. We have serious stories. We have opinion pieces. We have, um, gosh, I'm trying to think. We have historical. We we do do historical stuff. Um, because for me, I'm 
old school now, <laughs> evidently. And so it's important for me to share with the younger generation of veterans things that happened, stories that inspired me or stories that have inspired others. Um, we have Vietnam era veteran writers. Uh, my assistant editor, as a matter of fact, is was a radio man in the, in the Marine Corps during Vietnam. And so he shares a lot of his stories and, and battles and, and things that he was in. So there's a lot. Um, we don't filter. So um, the vet's voice is the vet's voice. And when I go to edit, let me tell you, sometimes <laughs> it's, it's difficult, but we make sure that their, their voice is their voice. We just make them look really good. That's my job. You know, I love that. I love that it's veterans, not only veteran led, but it's veteran focused, right? So there's like a certain community that gives them mm -hmm. not only a voice, but a community again, just to be together and just to reflect on yes. those moments. And then also educate, like you said, the new generation. So speaking of veteran support, you're also a member of your local veterans chamber of commerce. Yes. So why is it important for you to kind of stay connected to the military as a veteran? Well, you know, when I got out of the military, as I said, there were no transition services and really veteran organizations per se were the typical American Legion, DFWs. Um, I was not a combat vet, so I didn't qualify for the BFW. Um, I, and, and there's just been a lot, there wasn't a lot of, of support. So there were about 25 years of my adult life after service that I just pretended not to be a veteran. Um, there just wasn't that camaraderie. And then about 10 years ago, um, I started really getting involved. I'd see all these veteran things and I'm like, oh, I want to be a part of that. <laughs> so, um, so I joined the American Legion and it was great at the time. And, and I really got back into that brotherhood, sisterhood aspect of it. But I, what happened was I really fell in love with my brothers and sisters again. And I, and I remembered and it, it sparked that 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 place where of that camaraderie that we had in the military and active duty. And so it was great. So I reconnected, I got back involved, and um, now we're here and we're kind of taking the lead and we're we're becoming a resource um, for veterans. And and that's the other thing we do. We we highlight at least at minimum at least two uh independent veteran run um veteran service organizations every every issue uh, we want to make sure that that veterans have the resources they need to reach out and talk to a person and so that's one one of the other things that we do in in addition to the magazine you also ran a nonprofit, so what influenced your decision to start the nonprofit and how did your military skill set assist you um, in that endeavor? Well, you know, I was a corpsman, but I, I tell people, and it isn't a lie, I know far more about the Marine Corps than I do the Navy. <laughs> Don't ask me a lot about the Navy. The mo most I know about the Navy is like ranks. Um, I know there's ships involved somehow. Um, but, at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, um, it being around the Marine Corps, you know, my brother's so there's this saying, improvise, adapt, and overcome. And so as a corpsman, that was drilled into me, being on a Marine Corps base. And when we started the nonprofit, it was just like, okay, this is possible, this is possible. You just have to impro improvise, adapt and overcome. So, you know, I don't really understand the whole um, analogy of crayon eater. Um, that was before my time, but it does allow <laughs> us to color outside the lines. So that that I will say, and, um, and, and that's how it did. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, now I'm saying this as a veteran, I'm not saying this to active duty. Sometimes it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. So, so that's you heard it here. 
<laughs> so, this Christine, is we have members. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we have members of the military community watching us live right now. So what advice mm -hmm. would you give service members and veterans who want to start their own business? So my advice to them is do what you're passionate about. Find what you're passionate about because that starting a business is hard. You think the military is hard? Starting a business is brutal. Um, you know, figure out what you want to do. Is it a passion? Is it something that you're willing to do for free for five years? You know, because all the money you have coming into a business, the first, you know, three, four or five years, it's not going to go to a paycheck. And I am so sorry. My cat is deciding she wants to be a part of it. <laughs> oh um, my God. Gosh, let's just talk about your cat. Uh, I thought I, I saw a tail ones. earlier. I thought I saw a tail. Oh my this goodness. Is, this is Callie. Oh, Hi, Callie. Oh. She's like, nope. <laughs> she's, yeah. she's my boss. So um, usually she's laying down on the job. Um, <laughs> so getting back to business, make sure it's something you want to do for the long term. Um, when I started this business, I had no money. I had to build it up from nothing. And even today, the majority of the money goes back into the business. Um, meaning I don't really, I don't get a paycheck or, or anything like that. Be willing to do mm -hmm. it because it's, if it's something you're, you love and you're passionate about, you'll continue to dig deep and move forward. If it's not something you're passionate about, you're going to give up within the first six to nine months. So if you're going to start a business, the other thing is take some online courses. Skillbridge has a lot. Um, there's another one in Texas. I can't remember what it is, but um, take courses. Learn how to do a business plan. Go to the, the Small Business Administration. Find out what grants, especially as a veteran, and by the way, a female veteran, find out what grants are available to you and find out, you know, what you can use those grants for and how they can build your business. Um, and then the other thing is, is once a year, go in and redefine what you're doing. Don't don't get so stuck in this is my plan that you're not willing to let it be a little bit organic and grow as it's going to grow. And that's what we did with the magazine. I have led the magazine just grow as it as it did and i didn't um you know i didn't say well no this is how it has to be i just let as veterans came and all of a sudden it's like this publication isn't just mine i mean i may own it and i may be the you know the wizard behind the curtain making everything happen but the reality is is it's your magazine it's your voice and there's a lot of different voices a lot of different perspectives um but thankfully we're as military we're we're able to if there's something we disagree with we're grown-ups and we agree to disagree and and um or if there's something you didn't know and you're like oh my gosh i had no idea about this well um so that's that's the thing let it grow in it, it will grow but let it grow and then also Make sure you're grateful to the people who are there standing beside you. And that's what the DFW Veteran Chamber is for me. They're phenomenal. And if you're not even mm -hmm. close, if you don't know what you want to do after you get out of the military, please visit us. We meet virtually every Friday morning. And, um, you know, the link's on our website. And and there's there's just so many amazing veterans and veteran business owners and and um, the support is phenomenal. No, thanks so much, Christine, for all those really good gems. I know so many active duty that are currently, you know, about to transition. They are really excited for that information because it is major and it is a big deal to change careers. So thank you so much for that. Um, it's been great learning more about you too and your magazine. So where can our viewers go to keep up with you and all things at East Magazine? So we have a Facebook page, um, Addie's Veterans Magazine, 
And we also have our website, addiesveteransmagazine.com. Super simple. So make sure you put the veterans in there. There is another At Ease magazine on the East Coast through the D.C. Uh, um, DC military uh, newspaper. So we're at Ease Veterans Magazine. But check us out. Um, take a look. We have all our issues, our flip books. So you can go look at them for free. You can read all the stories for free. Um, we use QR code technology. So if you're reading print, you can just scan and it'll open to a video or a song or a, vi or a website or whatever. And then we also um, link everything in our flip book as well. So so there's a lot of a lot of interactive um, opportunities when you're reading our magazine. Christine, I have just a quick off top topic question uh -huh. related to that. So what about veterans who want to share their stories? Do they go to those same resources? Yep, absolutely. In fact, um, you can e you can reach you can uh, email less at less as our assistant editor less at addiesveteransmagazine.com. Um, you can reach me, Christine, at DoubleDogPublishing.com, or you can um, just send us a message in Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. We're everywhere. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And so, Christine, before we let you go, what is ahead for you? Are there any new projects we should be um, on the lookout for? Well, currently I'm working on, um, it's a special project because I'm not a book publisher, but I'm working on a special project for a friend of mine, Sergeant Major, um, Greg Leal. So we're publishing his book. It's a compilation of, of um, short stories that he's written over the years. And it talks, it talks about his, um, his experience in March of 2003 in, a, in the invasion of Iraq, OIF. And so um, we're, we're working on his book. And then, of course, we're, we've already got covers um, scheduled out to spring of 25. So we've got some pretty amazing people. Um, coming up this fall, we have Ray Cash Care, Navy SEAL. Um, he's phenomenal. Um, amazing, amazing man. And um, just has a lot to teach. He's inspirational. So we're, we're focusing on him and my gosh, we've got so many stories. I can't even begin to tell you. That. <laughs> In fact, we've added eight pages. So our publication, our fall publication will be 88 pages. Uh -oh. I definitely look forward to, to reading what's ahead. So for our chief chat viewers, this episode is available on YouTube for future viewing. Be sure to tune in again at 1 p.m. Central on Thursday, July 20th, when we welcome actor Miles Taylor to the chat, and tune in again at 2 p.m. Central on Thursday, July 27th, when Media Path podcasters Fritz Coleman and Louise Palinker join the chat. Christine, thanks again so much for joining us today and for everything you do and your sacrifice in support of our nation's heroes. Um, Avenue means so much to the military community. So we wish you all the best. And um, if you wouldn't mind, just um, standing by um, so we can say formal goodbyes. Sure thing. Thank you for having me.